On one of my recent videos, a viewer commented that in Ruby on Rails, it's impossible to implement the solid design patterns because the dynamic typing aspects of the Ruby language causes solid to break down. Now, if you're unfamiliar with exactly what solid is, it's a set of principles that help you design better object-oriented code in your program. Now, the solid design patterns themselves are a big enough topic for a video of their own, but in this video, I kind of want to focus on a particular aspect, the L in solid, which stands for Liskov substitution. And this is also referred to as duck typing. And what a duck typing is, is it's a way of when you pass in a, um, an object to a class that's going to do some function on that object, you could substitute any number of classes going into it that implement the same design patterns and the same methods that you could access. Now, a good example of this in the Ruby language would be enumerable objects such as hashes and arrays. So both the hash and the array have a size method. And if you call the size method on it from your program, it doesn't matter if that object is a hash or an array. It's going to give you an integer telling you how big the object is. And that's an example of Liskov substitution in that the program that's executing the method on the object doesn't really care what type of object it is as long as it implements those particular methods. And this can be a very useful design pattern because you could do operations on very similar objects without having to worry about typecasting errors and typecasting problems. Now I'm going to show you an example of where this is kind of useful in a Ruby template, but it's also a little bit dangerous as well and give you some ideas on how you could structure your code to work around this. So here's a legal form generated by our Ruby on Rails slim template. It's, uh, it's just a regular form template and it populates these fields on the uh, legal form using an instance variable. This is the same one that actually we worked on in the previous episodes, such as the one about making a Grover PDF and the Ruby form objects. So in the business case I want to do here today, instead of having a form that's already filled out like this, I want to have one that is blank. It's going to be a blank variation of this form that's fully filled out. And the problem with the way that this is structured right now is that the form object that generates this data and arranges it expects a record that already exists in the database. So to make a long story short, this class here that uh, we're using to make the proxy form and display it inside of the view template well, all these methods here for validation, like already submitted and uh, some of the way that these fields get pulled up uh, with the relations that they are pulling, it actually causes some problems when I want to have a form that isn't saved in the database. I just want to create like a blank form and maybe freestyle whatever names or data that I want to put on that form. Uh, you can't do it with this particular object because it's not flexible enough. It's suited to a particular use case. Also, when we're looking at the template itself, there's a few things that need to be fixed. Uh, for example, here where it does form.datesign.day, well, this is going to cause a problem if date signed is nil or it doesn't exist because the form wasn't completed yet. So I'm going to have to modify uh, the form or at least um, the object going into this form so that cases like this get displayed differently where instead of showing the day that the form was actually signed, it'll have a placeholder for it instead. So here's the solution that I came up with and because there's a lot of detail in it, I'm just going to give you the overview. If you want to see the full code and the difference between all the commits, 
then I encourage you to sign up for my Patreon subscription where you could get the full access to this project source code and you could take a look at it yourself in detail. But overall what I did to solve this problem was I made the proxy form a proxy form base class and I took the common fields for that form that are going to be used uh, in both the blank form and a filled out proxy form and uh, I put those methods in the base class so full name is always going to be displayed uh, the meeting date is always going to be displayed these particular fields here the organization name is always going to be displayed so these are okay to have in the base class and the base class splits into two different types of form objects so we have the regular proxy form for the one that we want to uh, do our, our usual uh, treat as a normal form where the user goes on the page they could fill out the electronic signature box and then once that's filled out it'll display the uh, a different version of the form that we could turn into a PDF uh, we so this is like the base functionality that we start out with I extracted those common methods out to the base class uh, and then the base class splits into to this our, our traditional proxy form and then this new object called blank proxy form or, or proxy blank form is what I called the class for uh, better um, better alphabetical sorting but as you can see here a lot of the methods are the same as what we have in the original proxy form so we have electronic signature but just like we do it in the original proxy form there is an electronic signature here but this one takes the electronic signature on the proxy object inside of this form container whereas this one always returns a non-breaking space placeholder that goes into the HTML uh, same thing uh, with full name full name uh, okay so full name is actually getting overridden here uh, I have it in proxy form base where it references the proxy object uh, but here full name gets overridden and instead it gives you this placeholder of spaces so now this show signature form here and show submitter details is going to be one of the bigger differences that we have between the regular proxy form and the blank proxy form so in the blank proxy form you never want the signature form to appear whereas on the regular proxy form you want the uh, signature form and submitter details to show conditionally uh, if the form is already submitted you don't want to display it but if they haven't filled out an electronic signature yet you want to display that electronic signature box so here's one of the proxy forms as you can see here this is that signature box form where the where the person using this application will type in their name here in this box and they'll submit it and that'll count as an electronic signature. However, if you want to look at the blank version of this form, I made a special URL for this. Uh, as you can see here, it never displays this. Instead, it shows the placeholder for where the signature would go. And the reason that this is useful is that we could easily turn this we could feed this into the PDF version of our view and generate the PDF file so that was a demonstration of how Lizkov substitution works we could submit either the regular proxy form class into our template or we could submit the blank proxy form class into our template and the blank proxy form has a few method calls that are stubbed out and we could also submit either of those two objects to our PDF print interactors as well now one of the challenges of doing this implementation in Ruby on Rails is that if you're not very organized and concise in how you do it if you're a little bit sloppy in those particular methods that are going to be used across the different variants of the class your program could easily want to reference something that isn't there and especially if you have a very complex template you could end up with an error like this where you submit a variant of that form expecting it to have a special method call on it or whatever you want to call it uh, that template's going to be looking for that and not find it on that form and that's because there's no 
really real standard or documented interface uh, for those forms and you could easily make a mistake like that. A lot of other languages like Java or even TypeScript now try to overcome that documentation issue by having a special thing called an interface. So you have in this example like interface bicycle it defines all the methods that bicycle would have and then the actual class implements bicycle and then you would define all those methods there but if you don't do this if you don't set this up properly then the compiler will throw an error and uh, then you'd have to go implement those methods so the interface is kind of like documentation that's built into the code ruby doesn't have such a thing as interfaces however the language maintainers are kind of starting to head in this direction with a new feature integrated into Ruby version 3 called RBS. At this point, RBS is still a library, a third-party library, a gem that you'd have to include in your Ruby program, but it promises to add a lot of the benefits of strong typing and interfaces that TypeScript and some of these other languages have. So I think a good way that we could probably try to remedy this documentation sort of issue a little bit and kind of make an interface in Ruby is inside of the base class, we could make methods that are explicitly labeled as abstract. So for example, in blank proxy form, we have this show signature form, which always returns false. In the regular proxy form, show signature form, has some, a little bit of logic behind it. If we make another type of form object that we want to make available, we would want to make sure that show signature form has an implementation of some sort, uh, just in case the template tries to call it. So one of the ways we could do this is we could take this method declaration and we could add it to proxy form base but if you try to call it without defining it let's have it raise an error so in this case here if uh, we, we have this documentation for show signature form in the proxy form base class uh, but if it's called and it's not defined at least we have a note here telling us that we have to define it in Ruby it's hard to catch these errors preemptively because there's no compiler whereas in other languages like TypeScript, they're compiled so interfaces work because the compiler could check that all the interface methods have been implemented. Another thing that I don't really like in general about the way that Ruby on Rails handles front-end templates is that the template itself doesn't have a definition or a way of defining what you would expect to pass into it. So, for example, like in this, the show template, it references an instance variable called form classes, which is defined in the controller calling it. It's passed in right here in this uh, code here, generate proxy PDF. Uh, the form classes instance variable is assigned here in, so when you're generating the, the PDF version, but not in the controller if you're viewing it through the web page only if, if, if you're doing it through the um, through a PDF generator so there's an assumption that form class is going to be there in this case we have a, a safety check here for form classes that present but also form uh, this is the form itself the form object uh, whether it's the blank proxy form or the regular proxy form version there's a lot of assumptions being made here because you could assign anything to form. You could make form a string if you wanted to, or an integer, or some other data type, and try to run it through this template, in which case it would raise an error because the, there's no implementation on you know, whatever other class you're using for something like template render options. Or if you drill down into what's being called here, let's say the, the default proxy form template, in all of these references where form is being called, it's making assumptions about what's available on that object called form. And it would be really nice if there was a way 
to define on the template what form is and what methods it should implement because sometimes these could get really complex and there are a lot of assumptions being made and I think that's the advantage of a lot of other languages and the direction that things are going right now and on the front end why TypeScript is so popular because it kind of resolves that sort of issue by the compiler will kind of pre-screen that sort of stuff for you. So one of the ways that I try to help with this sort of problem or the ambiguity that could arise from this is I have a couple of rules about the way that I um, I write my front-end templates. Generally, I try to keep it to one instance variable at the top level. So like here in the show thing, that there's one main instance variable, which is form. In this case, I'm kind of bending that rule a little bit. Uh, I have this form classes instance variable as well. But most of the time, I'm going to try to just stick to one instance variable so it doesn't get too confusing. And then if I'm rendering any partials or sub templates with this, I'll pass in the local variable for it. And I don't like having the partials try to make assumptions about what instance variables are going to be available. And then on top of that, I generally like to have the partial or the template only reference one method called deep on the object just so that you don't end up with a long chain of method calls. Uh, and here I'm kind of breaking that rule because uh, when I'm having a date type, uh, I have a few date formatting calls, such as uh, the format time here for, for meeting date. I have form sign dot day. That actually caused some problems on the blank proxy form because, because as you can see here, for cases where I don't have a date in place and date could be nil, like date signed, I actually had to make a special mock class or, or, or kind of a dummy class here called date placeholder. And that kind of stubs out the methods with placeholders for that particular form. And I don't know, I think that design's a little bit messy but it works. However, if this were to get like really complicated, this sort of thing would kind of increase the likelihood of running into some sort of an error or accidentally trying to call something that doesn't exist. So anyway, uh, I hope you enjoyed this video giving you an overview of Liskov substitution in, in Ruby on Rails and some of the difficulties that you have to overcome with it. Ruby gives you a lot of power and flexibility but like spider-man says with great power comes great responsibility so you have to code responsibly when you're writing ruby and doing something like Lizkov substitution anyway if you like this video go ahead and hit the like button on the video on youtube and subscribe to my channel as i'll be posting more content like this see you next time